In the vibrant landscape of 1970s cinema, a peculiar and enchanting film emerged, capturing the imagination of audiences young and old. Have you ever wondered about the untold stories behind the making of this unique movie? Or perhaps it left an indelible mark on your life, sparking inspiration or evoking cherished memories. As we delve into the fascinating world of this cinematic gem, consider the lesser known anecdotes that surround its creation. Did you know about the unexpected challenges faced by the cast and crew or the surprising twists that unfolded behind the scenes? These tidbits add layers to the narrative, making the film not just a product of its time, but a captivating story of its own. Now, we invite you to share your personal experiences. What is your most cherished memory related to this cinematic journey? Has it influenced your perspective, or do you hold a special connection to a particular scene or character? Your stories and memories are invaluable, and we would love to hear them in the comments below. So, let's embark on a nostalgic journey together, exploring the captivating world of this 1970s cinematic wonder. Your insights and anecdotes contribute to the rich tapestry of its legacy. Share your tales, and let's celebrate the magic that movies can bring to our lives. Composer Charles Fox, known for his work on Love, American Style, enlisted the same vocal performers for background vocals in the 1970 movie. This musical connection brings a familiar touch to the soundtrack. On the casting front, Sid Croft initially approached Betty Davis for the role of Boss Witch. However, Davis was so offended by the proposition that she abruptly hung up on Croft. Undeterred, Croft turned to comedian Flip Wilson, famous for his portrayal of the character Geraldine. Wilson was willing to take on the role, but demanded more money than the budget allowed. This financial hurdle led to a change in casting for the iconic character. These behind-the-scenes anecdotes shed light on the dynamic decisions shaping the 1970 movie and the challenges faced in bringing it to life. The clash of creative vision, budget constraints, and unexpected casting twists all played a part in the making of this cult classic, offering a glimpse into the intriguing world behind the whimsical facade of the film. In the making of the 1970 film Puffed Stuff, a significant collaboration took shape between songwriter Charles Fox and Norman Gimbel. This partnership marked the beginning of their journey together, eventually leading them to become Songwriter Hall of Fame inductees. Beyond Puff Stuff, Fox and Gimbel joined forces to create memorable tunes such as Killing Me Softly with his song, I Got a Name, and Ready to Take a Chance Again for various TV shows and films. Amidst the peculiarities of Puff Stuff, a curious choice unfolded as Jimmy adopted the persona of Witch Beetle. This decision was rooted in the prevalent American association of British accents with the Beatles during that era. It added a unique flavor to the film, capturing the essence of the cultural backdrop of the time. Notably, in Puff Stuff, the character Jack Wilde, taking on the role of Jimmy, exhibited a distinctive vocal approach. More prominently than in Living Island, Wilde's voice was double-tracked, creating a crowd-like effect. This choice, perhaps made to mitigate pitchiness, resulted in a sonic atmosphere where Jack Wilde sounded like a multitude rather than a singular voice. These facets contribute to the layers of creativity and decision-making that shape Puff Stuff. From the inception of a lasting songwriting partnership to the cultural resonance of Witch Beetle and the nuanced vocal stylings of Jack Wilde, the film stands as a testament to the dynamic choices and collaborations that define its legacy. Critically panned upon its release, the 1970 film faced harsh reviews, with many in the press labeling it as garbage. However, amidst the unfavorable reception, Cass Elliott's performance and singing managed to garner some praise. The film, an extension of the earlier successful television series, aimed to recoup the hefty expenses incurred during its production. The show's popularity in terms of viewership figures didn't translate to financial success, prompting the producers to venture into the movie realm. In one peculiar scene, drawing inspiration from the Kentucky Fried Chicken franchise, the character Wichapu humorously roasts the central character over an open flame, declaring him finger licking good, and playfully initiating his rotation with a call to spin for the colonel. Despite the critical backlash, Cass Elliott's contribution stood out, offering a silver lining in the midst of unfavorable reviews. The film, born out of the producer's effort to recover costs from the high-budget television series, showcases the challenges faced in transitioning from small to big screen. From unconventional roasting scenes to unexpected moments of praise, the 1970 film delves into the complexities of adapting a successful TV series to cinema, navigating both criticism and moments of unexpected acclaim.
Cass Elliott, living next door to Sid Croft, did a solid for him, taking on a role in the flick as a favor. The first Gold Key comic of H.R. Puff Stuff was based on this film. Boss Witch got her look from Martha Ray, but Mama Cass wasn't replicated due to likeness rights, so Witch Hazel turned into a regular witch instead. In a scene during a song about the world, the Earth image, and the Van Allen radiation belts, Universal Pictures logo at the time, briefly popped up sans the company name. Universal put this movie out. That's the starting scoop on this show. Clips from the film found a spot in the opening credits of Croft Superstars, a series showcasing reruns of Sid and Marty Croft's TV shows, including the iconic HR Puff Stuff. This exposure extended the reach of the whimsical world created in the film, connecting it with a broader audience familiar with the Croft universe. Scenes from the movie nestled among other beloved shows, offering viewers a glimpse into the colorful, fantastical realm of characters and adventures. The inclusion of these snippets in the series intro served as a gateway to the enchanting realm of puffed stuff for both loyal fans and newcomers alike, cementing its place within the Croft legacy. Lost Childhood The price of stardom on the cast of the 70s film delves into the challenges faced by young actors thrust into the limelight. Amid the whimsy of the film, the child actors navigated a world far removed from normalcy. For Jack Wilde, portraying a lead role at a young age came with pressures that altered his childhood, leading to later struggles with addiction and personal turmoil. The fleeting nature of fame took its toll, casting shadows over the lives of those who found stardom early on the silver screen. Their experiences shed light on the darker side of Hollywood's treatment of child stars and the lasting impact it had on their lives. As our journey through the whimsical world of a certain enchanting film draws to a close, it's a splendid moment to pause and contemplate the resonance it holds within the corridors of our memories. The 1970 Marvel, whose name gracefully dances on the edges of our recollection, beckons us to unearth our treasured experiences and musings about its magic. What adventures did this cinematic Marvel conjure in your youthful days? Perhaps it was the fantastical escapades or the vibrant characters that etched an indelible mark upon your imagination. Whether it was the mesmerizing landscapes or the delightful tunes, Puff Stuff invites you to unfurl the tapestry of your mind and share the hues that this cinematic masterpiece painted in your world. Your tales, anecdotes, or ponderings add yet another layer to the rich fabric of this timeless creation, stitching together the collective nostalgia and wonder that surrounds it. Let your voice intertwine with the chorus of reminiscences, weaving a narrative tapestry that celebrates the enduring charm of this celluloid treasure. So, if the spirit moves you, do lend your voice to this symphony of memories. Share your reflections, spin your yarns, and let the warmth of nostalgia kindle the embers of shared experiences. Thank you, dear friend, for embarking on this contemplative voyage. Your participation in this collective reverie is a testament to the enduring allure of cinematic wonders like this.